Which one do you think provides more resistance to the blood flow? Arterioles or capillaries? Of course capillaries because they have a smaller radius. Wrong. It's arterioles. We will find out the reason for this as we study blood pressure along the vascular circuit in this video. Welcome back to nonstopneuron.com where learning medical concepts is as easy as watching cartoons. Let's get started. This is a schematic diagram of the entire circulatory system. This is the heart. The lower part is systemic circulation and the upper part is pulmonary circulation. Let's see pressure at different points in the entire circulation. The left heart pumps blood into the systemic arteries that have a pressure of about 95 mmHg. In arterioles, the pressure drops to 60 mmHg. In capillaries, it's 25 mmHg. In venules, it's 15 mmHg. And in veins, it drops from 15 to 3 mmHg. Then we have right heart that pumps blood into pulmonary circulation. Here, pulmonary arteries have a pressure of about 15 mmHg. Capillary pressure is about 10 mmHg. And in pulmonary veins, it's about 5 mmHg. See, the pressure at many points oscillates with cardiac cycle and many other factors. We are considering only mean pressure here to keep the discussion simple. From these numbers, we can see two things. One, the pressure in systemic circulation are higher than those in pulmonary circulation. See, the systemic arteries have a pressure of about 95 mmHg, whereas pulmonary arteries have a pressure of only about 15 mmHg. In systemic capillaries, pressures are about 25 mmHg, which is higher than 10 mmHg in the pulmonary circulation. And in veins, systemic side has pressure ranging from 15 to 3 mmHg, whereas pulmonary veins have a pressure of only 5 mmHg. Thus, the systemic circulation has high pressures. The second point is, the entire circulation can be divided into two parts based on pressure, high pressure system and low pressure system. The high pressure system includes systemic arteries and arterioles. The pressure in the left ventricle gets high when it contracts. It can also include left ventricle in its contracted state in high pressure system. Low pressure system extends from systemic capillaries through the remaining circuit including entire pulmonary circulation. Also, left ventricle in relaxed state has low pressure. So these were high and low pressure systems. Now let's see the same pressures in graphical form because we will be using graphs a lot in our later discussion. In the systemic circulation, arteries have a pressure of about 95 mmHg. In arterioles, it drops to 60 mmHg. In capillaries, it's 25 mmHg. In venules, 15 mmHg. And in veins, it's 15 to 3 mmHg. Then we have the right heart pumping by which increases pressure to 15 mmHg in pulmonary arteries. In pulmonary capillaries, the pressure drops to 10 mmHg and then in veins, it drops to 5 mmHg. We can easily see the pressure drop occurring at various levels in this graph. Now, the profile of pressure drop depends mainly on resistance at different levels. And that is the topic of our next discussion, relation between the resistance and fall in pressure. At any level of branching, the greater the resistance, the greater the fall in the pressure. For example, here this vessel has lesser resistance, so fall in pressure is smaller. On the other hand, this vessel has greater resistance, so fall in pressure is greater. In the systemic circulation, the greatest vascular resistance occurs at the arterioles. So this is the site where we see the steepest pressure drop. And now is the time to answer the question that I asked at the beginning of the video. Why it's the arterioles where we see the greatest resistance and not at the capillaries? If you still think that capillaries provide more resistance, well, you are not totally wrong. If we pick a single capillary and a single arteriole, the resistance would be more in capillary because it has a smaller radius. But the thing is, aggregate resistance at any level of branching depends not only on radius but also on total number of all parallel vessels at that level. The more the parallel vessels, the smaller the aggregate resistance. As capillaries far outnumber the arterioles, the aggregate resistance at the level of capillary 
is less than that at the arterioles. Thus, the arterioles provide the greatest resistance. And therefore, that is the set of the steepest pressure drop. If you understood that concept, it's time to go even deeper. In the previous discussion, we saw that difference in pressure between two points depends on the resistance between these two points. But what about exact pressure at a particular location in between these two points? I mean, the pressure drop profile between these two points can take this or this or any shape in between. What exactly will happen? The answer is, it depends on distribution of resistance along the path. Let's understand it with an example of capillaries. Here we have arteriole, capillary and venule. Pressure at arteriole is 60 mmHg and at venules it's 15 mmHg. Now the pressure in the capillary is not necessarily the arithmetic mean of these two pressures. It in fact depends on distribution of resistance between arteriole and venule. That is precapillary resistance and postcapillary resistance. These resistances can vary with arteriolar and venular constriction and dilatation. Under normal conditions, arterioles provide slightly more resistance than venules. So pressure drop is more on precapillary side and we get 25 mmHg pressure. However, with dilatation of arteriole or constriction of venules, the pressure tends to increase. On the other hand, with constriction of arteriole or dilatation of venules, the pressure decreases. Thus, the exact pressure at a particular location between these two points depends on the distribution of resistance in between those points. So this was all about pressure along the circuit. Let's have a quick summary. Blood pressure falls as we move from arteries to veins. Pressures in systemic circulation are higher than those in pulmonary circulation. High pressure areas are left ventricle under contracted state, systemic arteries and arterioles. Low pressure areas extend all the way from systemic capillaries to pulmonary veins and left ventricle under a relaxed state. And finally, the profile of pressure fall is determined by distribution of vascular resistance. That's it for this video. If you feel this video will help your friends and colleagues, please share it with them too. And don't forget to subscribe because lots more to come. At Nonstop Neuron, learning medical concepts is as easy as watching cartoons. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.